Hallelujah. I just won't go over there. <laughs> no? We'll be fine. Let's stay over here. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word. We thank you that you're taking care of all the, all the things of, of, of the natural realm. And we thank you that the spiritual realm is, oh, we're fired up. Holy Spirit, this morning, have your way. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen, amen. and amen. Glory amen. to God. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. For I know the thoughts, and some translations say the plans. I know the thoughts or plans that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace. That word peace is the word shalom. It means nothing lacking, nothing broken in your life. And not of evil. And to give you an expected end. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. How many know that God's already got a planned out destiny for you, a planned out life, blessed life, and God wants you to find out about it? Let's look at verse 12. Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray to me, and I will hearken to you. In other words, we, we need to find out the plan, the thoughts, what he wants for us, and we do it through prayer. Now go on, verse 13. And you shall seek me. How many know you need to seek the Lord to find out who you are? Amen. Uh, God wants to show you in this book who you are and the authority of the believer. He wants to show you that you are more than a conqueror. He wants to show you who you are. Amen. Amen. Most people don't know who they are because they've never read the book. Uh, you know, uh, you, you read this book. It begins to tell you that God has a plan. And his thoughts toward you are as the sand of the sea. That means he's had billions of thoughts since the foundation of the world just about you. And he's still thinking about you. And he's thinking about you right now. Come on. And he cares about you. That's why he's thinking about you. You ever notice that if someone cares about somebody, they think about that person? Well, they, God cares about you. God is love. God is love. That's what the Word says. God is love. He doesn't just have love. He is it. <laughs> he is love. He didn't know how to do anything other than love. You say, well, you know, he was pretty mean in the Old Testament to those people. Fire and brimstone and all kinds. No, 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 no. That was justice. Come on, somebody. Every time you saw something like that, it was because somebody was hurting his kids. My, my two daughters, somebody starts hurting my two daughters, they're going to have some vengeance. <laughs> you better not come around my, you know, my two daughters or my grandchildren. So, no, no, that was love. People try to make out God as some mean God, some horrible God, you know, that has killed and, and, and uh, done, you know, opened up the, the ground and swallowed up people. And, no, 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 no. That's called a good God who takes good care of his children. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Aren't you glad you're a child of the king? Yes. Amen. Praise God. I, I, mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Whew. Seek his plan. Look what it says. And you shall seek me and find me. Amen. And when you search for me, when you search for me with all your heart. In context, it's talking about all these wonderful things that God has planned for your life. Uh, prosperity, that's what it said. It says shalom, that's prosperous things. That, that's to get you over into good things, amen. No evil. Everybody say no evil. No evil. I tell you what, that's a good thing, amen. Well, it seems like we've had a lot of evil. We've got, we got some seats uh, over here on the far side, if, if those extra people there coming in, glory to God. Amen. All right. God, God's a good God. God's a good God. The devil's a bad devil. And the devil's under your feet. Amen. Hallelujah. So it says if you seek the Lord, <laughs> you seek the Lord, you're going to find him. In context, you're going to find this, this, this peace. And sometimes when we look at the word peace, we just think, well, it's, oh, it's just peaceful. Just peaceful. Now, that's the word shalom. That's the blessing. The blessing of God. 
Nothing lacking. Nothing broken. No curse. Glory to God. And then it goes on, no evil. And then it says an expected end or a destiny. Hallelujah. How many know that destiny is just a fancy word for destination? But it sounds better. If you were hopping on a, a bus, well, let's make it a train. If you were hopping on a train and you were heading from here, from, from Rockwall, Texas, and going all the way to New York City, I'd ask you why. No, it's a, you, <laughs> you're on a train and you're going. How many know that your destiny or destination is New York City? Let's change that. How about Florida? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Beautiful. She's, she's from Florida. Glory to God. You're leaving here and you're going to Florida. That's better. All right, we'll get this straight. And you hop on the train and you're going to your destination, your destiny, your destination of Florida. Along the way, there'll be barking dogs. I've never seen anybody care about the barking dogs along the way of their destination. You're on the train. How many know in your life there's people in your life that are barking dogs? Trying to get your attention, to get you off track, to try to get you, you know, thinking some other way. But how many know that God wants you to get on track? He wants you to. How many know that engine of that train will get you to your destiny? The engine of God is going to get you to where you need to go in life. Where you're going in life is already there. It's already, come on. God sees the end from the beginning. He's already planned out the end from the beginning. And it's good. He said, these are the thoughts I think toward you. He said, these thoughts, I've thought them out. These are thoughts that I've thought towards you. And if you'll seek me, you'll find me. And I'll get you there. Don't care about the barking dog. You don't stop the train. Well, I heard, uh, excuse me, engineer, I heard some barking dogs. Could you stop the train? <laughs> we want to get off, see what they want. Sometimes it's friends. Sometimes it's coworkers. Sometimes it's people you know. Sometimes it's family. Oops. Sometimes there are people that are trying to tell you why you'll never make it. You'll never amount to anything. You're, you're no good. Blah, 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 blah. No. How many know when you get in the Word of God, you'll know exactly who you are in the authority of the believer? And you'll find out that you will make it. Why? Because he's already seen the end from the beginning. He's already made a way where there seemed to be no way. Sometimes it seems to be no way. How am I ever going to get there? God has showed me some things. I believe this morning God has showed you some things. I believe this morning God has showed you some things. And some of those things seem pretty wild. Some of those things you think, well, how are we ever, how are we ever going to see these things come about? Well, guess what? God. I see God. God's about to make a way where there seems to be no way. Amen. Somebody, somebody said, well, I, I believe I'm going to own my own business. But I don't know how to ever do it. God. How many know God will give you the wisdom? How many know man's wisdom is only so good, but God's wisdom is complete? If you seek me, you'll find me. When you find me, you'll know what you're to do, and you'll have everything you need for it. Amen. I'm going to preach myself happy. Glory to God. Amen. Woo, glory to God. Glory to God. Mm. You get into prayer, you get in the Word, you're going to fulfill your destiny. Amen. You'll get to where you're going. Hallelujah. Turn with me to James chapter 1. Just go to Hebrews and keep going. James chapter 1. And uh, go down here, verse 23. How many love the word? For if any be a, be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man beholding his natural face in a mirror, for he beholds himself 
goes his way and immediately forgets what manner of man he was. Ever been to one of those carnivals with a distorted mirror? You walk in and you're big and fat and skinny face and go like this and you're skinny and big head. And, <laughs> and you always want to make sure you're with somebody and they do it first. Because if you're first, everybody laughs at you. So you, do, you let them go, oh, go ahead. If they're older, you say, uh, age before beauty. Whatever, you just let them go. And so they go, glory to God, and they're going, you know, you know they get, uh, those, those mirrors, it's a distorted image. Some of you have a distorted image. The image you have of yourself, God wants to change. We were made in His image. Come on. You weren't made in some image that is, uh, you know, a world image that, that's incomplete. You were made perfect. Matter of fact, when God made you, you're, you're, you're wonderfully made. He, he, when he made you, he, he made everything about you perfect. And then he put gifts in you. Hallelujah. And you never know what those gifts are. I mean, those gifts could be all kinds of different things. It, it, and you say, well, I, I'm not that good at anything. Oh, yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. And maybe the enemy's lied to you so long about it that you don't see it. But ask other people. They know. Ask people that like you. Anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, 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 and begin to flow with what God has done. What God is doing. What God has already revealed and what God's about to reveal as you seek Him in prayer and you seek Him through the Word. I mean, we have the natural word and we have the rhema word. Amen. A rhema word just means he's talking directly to you. He says, my sheep hear my voice. I want a revelation. I, I want a word from God. I want a word that's so powerful, a word that will change my life. I don't want a distorted view of who I am. I want the view of what God says I am. I don't want to look at, at the future and say, well, we'll see what happens. No, I want to see what happens in the Spirit before it even happens. I want a revelation of it. I, I want to know why I was put on this earth. You were born for such a time as this. You were born for such a time as this. Hallelujah. We're about to enter into the greatest end time harvest the world has ever seen. We're about to see the greatest outpouring of the glory of God. We're about to see signs, wonders, creative miracles like we've never seen before. I, I praise God. I've seen tens of thousands of miracles over 25 years traveling on the road. Tens of thousands of miracles and creative miracles. Hallelujah. God replacing bone in, 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 in a person's head where they had a steel plate in their head. Ten inch surgical steel plate. And God dissolved the plate and put the bone back. And they got before and after x-rays. Come on. Hallelujah. There's a lot more to that story, but I just want you to know God's still in creative miracles because he's a creator. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God's about to do some things through you that are so awesome, so wonderful. You'll be walking down uh, the road and the anointing that's on you will get on someone else. You'll be there in line at Walmart, someone sneezes and you think it's a healing line, so you'll pray for them. <laughs> and they'll get healed because these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. 
That's the word. Come on, let's just get, let's get the word. Quit playing church. Quit, quit with the religion. Let's get to the relationship. Let's get to what the word says. Well, this is what we teach over here. This is what we teach over here. This is what we teach over there. What does the Word teach? I look at all these people. We got this doctrine, and we got that. We got the doctrine of this denomination. We got this doctrine. Well, does it line up with the Word? Not, not necessarily. <laughs> well, when it lines up with the Word, call me back. We're a word church. Well, you're in the word too much. Well, yeah. Because we're a word church. We get the word. We're word, 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 word. We just keep getting that word. We get the word. We're word, word, word. <laughs> Hallelujah. The word will tell you who you are. We need to know who we are and the authority of the believer. What God has given us, that authority in the name, the mighty name of Jesus Christ and by his blood. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I don't want a distorted view of what God has said. Proverbs uh, 23 says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. If you have a distorted view of your life, well, you know, I came from a very poor uh, background. Well, that was background. So why are you making it your for? <laughs> why are you making it your future? Well, I, I, we we were uh, we were sick all the time growing up. Well, I think that needs to end. Amen. Hallelujah. I think I've been sick about three times in the last forty years. Hallelujah. For a while there, I hadn't been sick in years, and then bleh, COVID hit. But anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. But guess what? We overcame that thing. Hallelujah. Didn't slow me down much. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The enemy's a liar. And he's lying to somebody here right now. He's lying to you about, well, don't listen to him. I know you're thinking about doing that thing that you have always wanted to do, but it won't work. God designed it. So if God designed it, it works. His thoughts towards you. I love Jeremiah 29, 11. Isn't that good? Oh, he's been thinking about you. If you think small, you'll limit God. Oh, how can we limit God? Because you have a free will. I don't want to limit God. I don't want to limit what He's doing in my life. I want to be all that I can be. And that doesn't mean I'm joining the army. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Lord. He'll make your way perfect. He'll make your way perfect. Because He's already been thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it. His thoughts towards you are the sand of the sea. So we meet a second Sammy, second Samuel. I wonder if they called him Sammy. Second Samuel. Hey, Sammy, come over here. You're having too much fun, Jeff. Second Samuel 22. Now, glory to God. Second Samuel chapter 22, verse 17. Thank you, Lord. 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 31. As for God, His way is perfect. <laughs> we just said that. Glory to God. Here it is again. As for God, His way is perfect. When He made you, He made you perfect. And the enemy spent all your life trying to tell you how you're not. The word of the Lord is tried. What, what's the word of the Lord? You're perfect. He is a buckler. I didn't say butler. He is a buckler. <laughs> that, that is a shield. 
How many know he's the, our shield of faith? Come on. Hallelujah. Do you know that the shield of faith will quench all, every fiery dart of the enemy? That means if you keep your shield of faith up, if you stay in faith, the enemy can't get you. A buckler is a shield, that's what that means, but it also means a protector. God is our protector. No evil. I said no evil. His thoughts towards you are no evil is going to come on you or your house. Hallelujah. But you've got to line your faith up with that. Amen. Oh, glory to God. So, it says, uh, his, he's my, my buckler. Glory to God. And it, and it says, to all them that trust him. He's your protector to all those that have faith in him. For who is God, save the Lord, and who is a rock, save our God? God is my strength and power, and He makes my way perfect. There it is again. He made your way, the way you should go, your destination, the way to your destination, the way to your destiny, perfect. Glory to God. He's made your way perfect. I said his plan for you is perfect. Yes. There is nothing wrong with the plan. There's nothing wrong with the plan. Whatever it is, I'm preaching good over here. The whatever, whatever the plan is, come on, is perfect. Whatever you think you're waiting on, whatever you think is good, whatever you'd love, whatever you're waiting on, God's plan is perfect. God's plan is perfect. God's plan is perfect. Whatever it is you're waiting on in your life, it can be done if you let it, and it'll be perfect. Well, you're just, you're just positive all the time. You're just positive. I've had people say that. Yeah, you're always seeing positive. <laughs> Philippians 4 tells you how to think. <laughs> Philippians 4 says, think on these things. And now one of them is negative. <laughs> well, I don't believe in all that positive thinking. Well, you negative view. Just continue to be negative and keep, to keep going on in your life, never achieving what God says you can achieve. Just, just be sheep trying to get by. Now it's time to mount up with wings like eagles. It's time to know who you are in Christ. It's time to get, do it all for His glory. If you had a business that just just going through the roof, <laughs> blessed uh, prosperity. Oh, I, well, I don't believe in all that prosperity. You know why? Because you're greedy. Right. Do you know people that are against prosperity? They don't even know it. They, they, they'll even say they'll even say, well, the definition of prosperity is greed. It's greed. No. Greed is only wanting it for yourself. Greed is only wanting it, prosperity, for yourself. The true definition of prosperity is wanting so much that I have something to give to my neighbor. You've been lied to. And you know why that lie? That lie, has, that, that lie has gotten in through movies. It's gotten in through churches. It's gotten in through all these different things. And it's leading to socialism. It's a lie. You go back to our founding fathers, you'll find out he, they wanted you to have uh, 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 prosperity. They, they wanted uh, the, the right in, in, to pursue happiness. The American dream. Today, the American dream and being a patriot is something wrong. I'm sorry. 
I still believe in America, and I still believe that this is the greatest country on earth, and I still believe that we are walking in God's blessing. Hallelujah. God blessed America. So I'm not going to believe this, this, this stuff. I'm, I'm going to believe that God's going to bless you and bless me so much we have something to give. Amen. Greed is only wanting it for yourself. I've had people even come to me. They say, well, Pastor Jeff, I, I, I just want enough for me and mine. And they think they're actually saying something, you know, humble, humble and nice. I, I just want enough for me and mine. That's the true definition of greed. I only want enough for me. Heard it so many times. Now, I want enough for me and my neighbor. Amen. I want enough for me and someone that has a need. I, I, want to, I, I, want to be, I want to be a vessel of God's blessing. Hallelujah. God's about to bless somebody big time because, because you lived... You've, you've thought out the lie so long, you've believed it. It's time to believe the word of the living God. Amen? Amen. Turn with me quickly to 1 Corinthians. Ah, hallelujah. 1 Corinthians. You'll find it right before 2 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And go down here to verse 17. If the whole body were an eye, it would be weird. If, if the whole body were an eye, where, where would be the hearing? If the whole uh, were a hearing, where was the smelling? probably wondered about that. But now, <laughs> has God set the members, look at, look at your neighbor, you say you're a member. Uh-oh, now you have to come back. But now, has God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it, was, as it has pleased Him? Amen. Glory to God. Your gift fits perfectly in the body of Christ. Your gift fits. I mean, you've got talents and gifts that God gives you, and, and everyone is fitly joined together. Not everybody is an ear. Not everybody is a foot. Not everybody... You know. No, we all fit. We all have a part. We all... We find the gift. We find the empowerment of the... Holy Spirit that has placed that power in us to be part of the body. God's thoughts towards you is to make you perfect. Oh my goodness. Perfectly fitted in a body. A local body and the corporate body. To fit in this body where everyone is supplying. Everyone is fitted. Everyone is, is excited about each day, knowing that they are bringing glory to God. Your gift is so that you can bring glory to God. If you're not walking in your gift, you're not giving God glory in that area. But He created you for that. He created you so that you'd give Him glory in everything that you do. I want to bring glory to God. People say, well, I'm too busy. I, I got my job. I wake up. I got to get on the freeway. Uh, Lake Ray Hubbard's always, I, I got to leave even earlier now. And I get down there and I, I find myself, go, go, go. And then I, get, I got to get home. I got to eat. Then I go to bed. And it's the same thing the next day. You weren't created for only that. Well, I'm too tired at the end of the day. Well, find some time for God. Because, you know, when your whole life is over, 
The only thing that's going to matter is what you did for him. Turn with me over here to 2 Corinthians. That's right after 1 Corinthians. Chapter 2. And go down here, verse 14. Now thanks be to God, which always, everybody say always. always. Well, I just can't believe that. Well, then you don't believe the word. For, <laughs> now thanks be to God, which always, always causes us to triumph in Christ. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Christ, hallelujah. You were created to triumph in Christ. You were created to triumph in your gift. You were created to triumph in your talent. You were created to triumph in your life. Everything you set your hand to shall prosper. That's the word. God wants you to be blessed. God wants you to be blessed so you can be a blessing. That's what he said to Abraham. He said, I'm going to bless you so you can be a blessing. Amen. Amen. Proverbs says, that, no, you didn't get all that blessing to hoard it up like the heathen do. Hoard it up for yourself. No. And you know what God does? You start giving it. He gives it back to you. Good measure. Press it down. Shake it together and run it over. Now you got more. Now you go, where else can I give it? Hallelujah. Oh, I just don't want to be a blessing. You sat in the front. I'm sorry. I, I know I keep looking over here. Blessing. Okay. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Preachers get a bad name. I'm trying my best up here not to look at anybody when I say things like that. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. How many know it's in Christ? Amen. And makes manifest the fragrance of his knowledge by us in every place. You know, when you start walking in your perfect gift, when you start walking in God's plan, you are a sweet-smelling Savior, sweet-smelling fragrance to the Lord. When you're doing things for God and you're a blessing, now God's looking down and saying, that's my kid. Yeah, yeah, that's my kid right there. Glory to God. That's how parents are. Parents see their child doing good and they're like, that's my kid right there. Every time Jesus did something, the clouds, the sky opens up. That's my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Dad. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. God God's trying. God, God's just waiting for a chance to say, Good. Good boy. Good. There's my daughter. Yeah, she, yeah, I knew you were going to do that. Glory to God. No, he'd say, Glory to myself. That's how he says glory to God. Somebody will get that when you get the parking lot. <laughs> All right. Turn with me quickly, Isaiah. Isaiah. Chapter 14. Hallelujah. I love the word of God. It'll show you who you are. It'll show you you've been redeemed. It'll show you that you, God's got a good life for you. He's planned it out. Isaiah 14, verse 27. Thank you, Jesus. For the Lord of hosts, that means all his angels, has purposed, has purposed. He's got a purpose. And who shall disannul it? And his hand is stretched out. And who shall turn it back? God's plan for you will succeed. The only one that can stop his plan is you. Amen. Not all the people in your life, not the person that told you you'll never amount to anything, not the person that came against you. No, none of those people can, can stop you. 
Well, say, so they, they have had a lot of, you know, they influence in my life. <clears throat> yeah, but that was past tense. Do yourself a favor and give yourself a future. Do yourself a favor and give yourself a future because it's up to you. People that succeed in life are people that don't allow anything, the barking dogs, the people, whatever it is, they don't allow any of that to stop them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I remember I was on Daystar one time, and, and I was telling the story about the, the train. And uh, I was up in Marcus Lamb's office, and I, I was just going on and on about the train. And, and he, he pointed at this painting behind him of a train. He said, you, you, did you know I love trains? I said, no, I, I, I didn't. He said, I, I love trains, I, everything about trains. And, and I was really getting into that about the train, man. I was getting into it, and he goes, I don't like that. Glory to God. <laughs> that train's going to get to the destination. That train is going to get to your destiny. You, God's engine of power is enough power to get you to your destiny. I don't, want to, I don't want to get to heaven. And they say, well, you know, this is where we pass out the crowns. You can just go ahead. Oh, yes. We've got about 55 crowns for you. Wouldn't, you, wouldn't it be awful you get to heaven and you don't get any crowns? Never really gave God glory. I was too busy. I want to get to heaven. And they put all these crowns on my head. And I take them back off. And I say, no, it was you, Lord. And I put it at his feet. Can you imagine getting to heaven and you don't have anything to put at his feet? I hope that gets in you. Well, I'm too busy. Too busy for God? No, we've got to get to a point where we are completely surrendered for His glory. That our life is for His glory. Hallelujah. God's glory. I, I, I want to do everything I do for His glory. Well, I, I can't come to church because I, I, I work on Sunday. Change jobs. I remember back in the early years when I first started out, I had to have a job on the side, and I, I, I'd go in there, and they'd say, you have to work on Sunday. I said, no, don't work on Sunday. Well, you have to, or you can't work here. Well, I said, I guess I won't work here. One company, they said, they said oh, uh, our biggest day is on Sunday. Our biggest day, it was a sales job. I said, well, I said, I'll be your best salesman. He said, no, you don't understand. You can't be the best salesman because our best day is on Sunday. I said, it's commission. What do you got to, what do you got to lose? I'll see, I said, I'll be your best salesman. He said, no, you don't understand. Our best day is the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. I said, I'll be your best salesman. Why? Because God was going to help me. That's right. Amen. He said, well, okay, I'll go ahead and hire you. It's commission. I not only became the best salesman they ever had, but I, I was written up. I had the biggest sales of any of the stores, uh, the places across America. Wow. 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 Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why? Because I put God first. Yes. It wasn't because of me. It was because I put God first and asked for His wisdom. Yeah. Well, it just seems like I'm working and working and working and working and I can't seem to... Yeah, well, maybe you need to stop and pray and find out the reason you were born. God's purpose and plan 
is revealed in His Word. And His Word doesn't return void. But you've got to work the Word. I'm going to end this morning in Ephesians chapter 1. Anybody get anything out of this this morning? Amen. Ephesians chapter... I knew you did. Glory to me. Ephesians. <laughs> oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, you'd all be jumping up and down if it was a football game. Ephesians <laughs> chapter 1. Go down to verse 27. No, I'm sorry. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 8. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 8. Wherein he has abounded towards us in all wisdom and understanding, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance. Oh, hallelujah. Being predestined to win. <laughs> Being predestinated according to the purpose of him. Well, what's the purpose? I know the thoughts, the plans you have for me. <coughs> the thoughts I have, the plans I have for you, saith the Lord, Plans of shalom, plans of no evil, plans of a destiny. Predestinated according to the purpose of him who works all things after the counsel of his own will. That we should be the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ that we would understand that we've been predestined to win. We've been predestined for His purpose to bring glory to Him. Say, I want to bring glory to the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your master plan. I will seek you and your word to know my purpose and destiny. And I will do it. I'll do it. All for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Whoo. That rapture is going to be good. Hallelujah.